Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Sharpener Pro 3 from the Nick collection by Google, which is now completely free as a plug-in to Lightroom and Photoshop. Theme tune! Do 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 do! Sharp edges! Sharp edges! Sharp edges! My sharp edges dance for sharpener. It wasn't very sharp though. So essentially, this is the very final tutorial for my Nick collection. And essentially, you'll have done your importing, you will have, I don't know, gone through all the other things that I've taught you, and the very last thing you would do is sharpen. However, in Sharpener Pro 3, you actually have a pre-sharpener, which you may use before everything, which essentially is trying to sharpen the image just a little bit before you do your editing. I actually have never done this and probably won't ever do this because I don't think it's necessary to do. Um, but you can do it anyway, but I'm just going to be doing the export output sharpener in Pro Effects. Anyway, let's jump in and have a look. So, um, let's come over here. So if you are inside Lightroom, essentially you would right click and go edit in and then you'd go sharpener, pre-sharpener or output sharpener, which is what I'm going to be going over today. Um, but if you want to do it in Photoshop, which I'm going to do today, you hit open as smart object. And that means you can go back and change any settings in the future. So here we are over here. Now, essentially, you just select it from the top here. You've got the pre-sharpener and the output sharpener. They're very similar. Pre-sharpener just is a little tiny bit and has very less options. Output sharpener has everything. So that's what we're going to look at today. If you don't see this, then you go to file, automate, and you're going to go to Nick Collection Selective Tool, and then you'll get this. So let's click the Output Sharpener just here, and it's going to load in the image like so. So let's have a quick look at all the options that we have within this. First of all, you have your views. So this is just the full image, and it will let you see all the changes that you make. Then you have a comparison. So essentially, you can move this around, and you can see the before and after. And then you have a side-by-side -side comparison, or you can rotate that to above and below, which is quite amazing. Um, and then over on the other side, you have your zoom, and you have the background color that you can change. I would suggest using medium gray. Okay, so let's jump into this side panel, which is where all of these effects happen. We're gonna zoom in on her face so we can really see the changes, and we're gonna use this one, the side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, before, on the right, with the sharpening. So the very first thing over here that we have to look at is what is the purpose of your export? And this is the most important thing. Why are you exporting it? And where is it going to be viewed after this? So display, okay, which is the first one, is basically if it's going to be viewed digitally on a display, whether that be a computer screen, a laptop sc screen, a projector, or it may be a mobile phone or a tablet or something like this. All of this comes under display. Now the other four are for all sorts of different printing. So let's quickly go through those. So display has your sharpening amount basically. That's what that allows you to do. And then under in inkjet, this is for inkjet printers, and you get to select the paper type, but the first thing you get to do is viewing distance. So for example, if someone's going to be holding onto the image, then the viewing distance would be up to 60 centimeters. That's just in front of their face, which is the most important thing. And then what you can choose is, for example, maybe it's going to be printed on an inkjet printed and it's going to go on a huge billboard and be viewed more than three meters away or nine feet away. Now click on this and watch what happens to the image. It completely sharpens it in such a dramatic way, but if you were to imagine you're going to be a long way away, that actually this sharpening watch would actually kind of look great, and it's going to allow this image to boost off the page, whereas if it's like this from a long way away, it's not going to look quite as good. So let's jump back in so we can see how different this is. Once you've selected the distance, so we're going to say up to 60, you can then select what type of paper. So for example, if it's on a canvas, 
it's going to sharpen it even more because the canvas is really rough and you're going to have to have that extra sharpening. Whereas if it's glossy paper, it's going to have less of a sharpening effect to it because it doesn't need it because it prints in more detail. And then you can even select what the resolution of your print is and you can create a user-defined one down here for a slightly different printer. So for example, a lower resolution, it's going to sharpen it a little bit more. A high resolution, it's going to have to sharpen it less because it prints in more detail. So the next one is a continuous tone. And essentially what the, that, that is, is when you send it away to a print lab, that's essentially what they do. And again, you have all sorts of DPIs that you can select within this. The higher DPI, the less sharpening that it happens. The next one is half tone. Now I believe that this is what newspapers, how newspapers are printed. So it's gonna really sharpen things. So if you're gonna send it to be printed in a newspaper, then that's what you might wanna select, but usually they will do that for you. And then you have, oh, you have different options, one of them being newsprint. And then you have different coatings that I'll have, and then you can change the printer resolution. Again, higher resolution, less sharpening that needs to happen. And then the final one is a hybrid device, and that is essentially split between a half tone and a continuous or inkjet printer, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but that's very specific to printing. So we're gonna work with display today. Now what I would suggest, I, I would usually wouldn't go above about 30. That for me is a massive amount of sharpening already, because um, you don't wanna over sharpen your images. But so you could maybe go up to 50, but I think you're pushing it. As soon as you're getting up to the 100%, it's really over sharpening for me and it's, it's gonna look bad on the screen. I think, unless you're gonna have it as a tiny little image somewhere, then potentially you could use that, maybe. So let's leave this around 30. Next thing is creative sharpening. Now this is where things get really interesting and allows you to do different things. So for this one, we're going to use the full view, so we're gonna see how it affects the image. Now, let's just reset all of these by double clicking on the triangles, like so. So the output sharpening strength, this is essentially how much of the adaptive sharpening it's gonna to give to it. The higher the number, 200% is gonna double whatever your number is here, or you can reduce it back and you can actually take it back down to zero with no sharpening. So we'll leave that at zero. That is essentially whatever you would want to do. We're gonna boost this to 50 so we can see more of an effect. Um, the next thing is structure. Now what this does is it looks at the texture of the image. So essentially, the pores in the face, the lines of the hair, the lines on the lips, for, for example this, booster structure is gonna really highlight all of those elements as you can see just there, and even the ribs on the dress down here. It's really gonna highlight every single detail like on the ribs of the dress. Go in the opposite direction, okay? And what it's gonna do, it's gonna smooth all of those elements out and reduce the texture of the image. So we'll leave that at zero again for now so we can have a look at all the different elements. The, if I'd like to zoom out and have a look at that, let's watch what happens when you add the texture, okay? It kind of adds this very weird, grungy, dodge and burn effect, effect to an image, so be careful with this one. I wouldn't go more than 10%. The next one is local adjustments. Now what this does, it analyzes the image and it localizes it to the hard lines, so like the eye lines, all the hard contrast changes within the lips and in the hair. So let's watch this, local adjustments, but it's gonna almost leave the skin tones alone. If you watch, bring it back to zero, it's gonna affect everything where there's a high level of contrast when we boost this up to 100 or 80, and it's gonna almost leave the skin tones alone. So let's, again, zoom out with this one and have a look. You can actually boost this a lot more, you see, without it ruining your image. And the opposite way will basically add a blur effect if you ever wanted to do that. The next one is focus, and that almost does the opposite to what local contrast does, and it leaves a, alone all of those edges, and now it does all of the large flat areas, okay? So for example, now if you watch, it's gonna boost all of those skin tones and add all sorts of little tiny flecks of um, sharpening all over the image. And again, let's zoom out to see that. You're not gonna see as much of an effect with that one. But again, be really careful because you're gonna over sharpen 
with that one. Personally, I would lose, use your local contrast a little bit and then your output sharpening strength. I wouldn't use any of these more than 10 or 15% because I think you could very quickly ruin an image. One thing you could do to an image like this one would be boosting the local contrast, okay? So that's all of your lines and edges and then reducing your focus. So it's gonna give a little bit of a softer areas wherever there's, it's really flat like the sky, for example, where you're not gonna to want to add in loads of sharpening. But let's reset these because there's one other thing that I wanna show you. In fact, let's really add structure to this, okay? And we're gonna add um, lots of focus to this so that I can show you what happens. Look at the sky. Now we've got all of this grain in the sky. Okay, and then we've got all of this on the skin tone. So let's say we didn't, we only wanted to sharpen the face and not the sky. Okay, and there's a, and so I've done it so extremely so I can show you this because what this comes into is control points and color range. So for example, if we were to choose color range, use the eyedropper, select on the sky, and then sharpening strength zero, if you watch what's gonna happen, now the sky is gonna go all back and smooth again, but yet the facial skin tones are gonna to stay really with this grunge effect. And again, we could do the opposite. We could leave this here, skin tones, use an eyedropper, select on the skin tones, and then we're gonna pull the output sharpening back to zero. And if we watch what go what's gonna happen now, it's gonna pull back all of our skin tones. Let's also select here and pull all the output sharpening back, and it's gonna help pull back all of the output sharpening on the skin tones within that. But remember, let's reset all of this to zero, um, like so. And the next thing that we're gonna to want to do, uh, and I want to use control points. So for example, let's take the skin tone here, we're gonna add a control point, we're gonna click on the skin tone, and we're gonna reduce the output sharpening, and watch what happens. All of the skin tones, it's taken away that. But on the sky, because of the way that the control points work, we zoom out and then we click on the button down here, it shows us that this control point is only doing where it's white. So you can see her skin tones. Hold Option and then duplicate this or Alt on a computer, then I can select her arm and it's gonna add in those skin tones and these skin tones here. So we can see what it's done now is it's actually reduced all of the um, sharpening on her skin tones, but it's left it all on the sky. So again, select what the output is and then go in and make any of the sharpening adjustments. Then all you have to do is hit OK. Now that's how to use Sharpener Effects 2 or 3. But what I would say is this, be careful. Do not over sharpen your images because you could ruin them very quickly. Anyway, this was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Please subscribe and leave me a comment. Thank you so much. Theme tune.